Okay, the next part of what we're doing is taking this full resolution reference that we've rough cut out, and we're gonna start refining the, uh, the edges, refining the cuts. And this is where like skilled, patient, uh, good technique in Photoshop really pays off. So I'm gonna start with some basic things. I've saved my work, I have it all layered up. All of these are placed and in resolution. So we're gonna start from the background. So I'm gonna start with my just my background layer. And the first thing we can do before we start merging and, and blending edges and softly erasing, we wanna be aware of certain things with each layer asset. Remember, each layer is just a full grid of pixels. And the thing we don't want is hard edges. <laughs> so these hard edges, we wanna make sure that we're always aware of where they are and that they're either being erased, taken care of, blended, or covered up. Now with my extreme background image, everything's gonna get covered up by other things, right? So I don't need to worry about cutting or softening that edge. But the other thing I can do to alter it is to just play with its color and its lighting. And I recommend that we learn to play with color and lighting before we do any kind of rough selections because it's already gonna to help to blend the images. But because I only have one image here, it's really up to me what kind of color and lighting I want. So this is gonna set the tone. And this is why we also don't use black and white reference. We want color reference because you can always take color away, but it can be problematic to add color in, right? So the new tools we're gonna use are under image and adjustments. We are never in this semester, because it gets too complicated, going to use layer adjustments, right? They're the same tools, but used in different ways. <laughs> so we are always gonna do what are called direct adjustments. So they're under image and adjustments, and this will make changes to the pixels in the layer immediately. So the adjustments we use for lighting are levels. And you can see this whole family of four adjustments at the top, brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure. They all deal with lighting, with value, lights, darks, highlights, midtones, shadows. The one that I'm gonna teach you how to use is levels. It's kind of the most straightforward. So click on that and you get this little window which has three sliders, a highlight slider, a midtone slider, and a shadow slider. If I push those sliders around, it will enhance, right? And notice what happens if I move the highlight slider, I lose pixels. All of a sudden where there were pixels, now it's just solid white. That is not good. That's called blasting out. So you don't wanna move the white slider. If I move the black slider, I get solid black and I lose pixel definition. And that is no bueno, it's no good. So what slider can I use? The middle one. <laughs> The mid-tone slider is a lot safer. This is for matching lighting, right? So if I want stormy sky, but I don't want so stormy, right? I can just lighten the mid-tones. And that way I don't lose any pixel definition. I'm just brightening the mid-tones, right? Nothing goes to white, nothing goes to black. And then if I want to limit them, like if it's just too bright overall, I'm just gonna take these limiting output levels and I'm gonna move that slider a little bit to the inside and you'll see it will limit the highlights, make it a little grayer, so it's not quite so bright. Or I will limit the darks, so it's not quite so dark. So that is levels as an adjustment. That's for lighting. For color, we go to image adjustments and we go to this next batch and you'll see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, different adjustments you can use to adjust color. We're gonna use two of them. And the first we're gonna use is called color balance. This is the most subtle, it's my favorite adjust, direct adjustment tool. And color balance will simply shift the temperature of the image. So right now it's very blue and cyan. I can shift it a little bit more towards the reds in the midtones, a little bit more towards the greens, a little bit more towards the yellows, and kind of bring out the colors I want. In the highlights, I can bring out more of those yellows, kind of warm it up, more of the reds. We are not on layer adjustments, we're on image adjustments. 
And even though the tools do the same thing, a layer adjustment puts it on a layer above and affects everything underneath. We, we want to affect the pixels directly in the layer. So we're never going to use layer adjustments. We're always going to use image adjustments. And then for shadows, I can actually cool the shadows down, kind of bring them more into the blue. Now here's the beauty of it. This is digital. We just did a lot of color alterations, and I can just see if I like them by hitting Command-Z. And it can make a pretty dramatic difference, right? So now I've adjusted the lighting and the coloring of that layer. Now I can bring in the next layer. Right? This is the layer at 100% opacity. One way I can blend them together is to take the opacity down a little bit. Right? But a better way to do it is to actually directly erase pixels. So before I do that, I want to play with the the levels and I want to play with the color balance. So I go to image adjustments, levels. I'm going to play with the midtone slider, brighten it up a little bit, maybe limit the output. And then I'm going to go to image adjustment, color balance, and I'm going to take out some of this yellow, put in a little bit more red. And in the shadows, put in a little bit more of the cools, those purples. And then in highlights, maybe put a little bit of the yellow back in. Maybe a hint of green, and then a hit Command Z makes a big difference. Okay, now I'm going to do our first most direct blending, and this is going to be using the eraser tool with a soft edge. And this is really key. So I use the eraser, it's underneath the different brush tools, it's just the basic eraser tool. Just like when we um, paint or use the paintbrush, we're just going to use, to begin with, a very simple brush. So you're going to go all the way up to your standard general brushes and choose the hard round pressure, right? So it's pressure sensitive. So the harder I press, the more it will erase. Now this is a hard round brush, right, which gives me a very clean edge. What I want is to adjust the hardness of the brush. And I'm going to take it down all the way to zero. So I have a soft edged brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the hard edges. So I'm at 100% opacity. I want 100% flow, 100% smoothing. And I'm just going to take off those edges completely. So I don't have any hard edges. The only layer that should have hard edges is your, your furthest back background layer. Okay, now that I've gotten rid of all of those, so you see the difference in the soft edge versus the hard edge. Now I can take the opacity down. I'm gonna take it down to about 40. And I'm gonna start erasing at a lower opacity. And this will start blending the two together. And I can decide how much of that cloud I want. Now, if I really want to do some really subtle erasing, this is a, a technique I call ghosting. Make your brush way bigger than you need it to be, right? And then just click on the outside of it. And you'll get this little kind of ghost echo effect, which will bite away at the edges. So as long as it's a soft brush, you can really smoothly transition this way. So you can't tell where one image begins and the next ends. And that's kind of the goal of most compositing, right? So that it's seamless. You can always hit Command-Z if you go too far. And you can always go to lower opacities if you think it's too strong. Even a 9% opacity when using a soft brush will make a big impact because the more you hit, the more it's taking away. And with that 9%, I might even take away a little bit from here, right? Let the layers come through. So now with the color adjustments and just with that blending, I have something that's pretty different than either of those individual layers. And then what other techniques do I have? I can always transform, right? I can always push and pull 
I can warp, especially if it's an organic element like these clouds. I can change it into my own scene, right? And then I can keep adjusting and erasing away. Just make sure you don't have any hard edges showing. Those are the telltales of shoddy photo Photoshop work. All right, so that's the first blend. Now that I've done that, I can see that this looks more purple than this. So I might go back to my background layer and do the color balance and just push it a little bit more towards the magentas and the blues because that can help them match even more, right? So we have full control over that. And those are the easy ones. The further background, that's easier. It's softer, it's you know out of focus. Once we get into the mid, mid range, the uh, middle ground, we wanna get a lot sharper. So now I'm moving on to, say I'll, I'll label these um, orange. I finished these. I shouldn't have to work on these again, right? These background layers. Now I'm going to work on this mountain. And this mountain is nice and sharp and in focus. That's good. It's high resolution. But I want to cut it out well, right? And it's not like it's shot on a green screen. But I can try. I can try using the magic wand, like we used in Cartoon Jumble, and turning on contiguous. So it's only pixels that are touching. At, at the default tolerance of 32, and I can click on the blue, and I'll see what it gives me, All right? It does a pretty good job, and then I can hit delete, but you'll see it leaves a little residue, always. And the danger of using the magic wand, though it can save you a lot of time, is if you don't have contiguous checked, it will take away pixels where you're not looking for it to take away pixels, right? So always have contiguous checked. So I can go through here because the blue is not found at all in the mountain itself, only in the sky. I can take little chunks away, but it's going to leave a lot of little debris. And if I turn off those other layers, you can see all of that, right? So sometimes it's nice just to have the gray layer showing. So what other tools do I have to kind of clean this up? Well, I could use the direct, go right to the detail of the direct eraser. Make it a smaller size. Make it about, you never want to do 100% hardness, no matter how hard the edge is, but maybe something like a 90% or an 85% hardness. And then I want 100% opacity, right? Even smaller tip, but again, this is pressure sensitive. And I can go in and I can just shave it away. And this is where your tablet's very helpful, that pressure sensitivity, right? And then once I've cleared enough of the edge, then I can just use the lasso and get rid of this debris, you know, using delete. And then the other option is I can use the lasso tool pretty directly. And so we're gonna learn about selection. So this looks pretty good, right? But if I use the lasso tool and I kind of redraw it, I can get all those little blue areas. Not that a little bit of blue isn't bad. And then I can hit delete. Now the lasso on its default settings is extremely sharp. So we'll just cut right through the pixels. But you also have an option here of feathering. So if you want a slightly soft lasso, and this is better for, you know, further in the background. I'll kind of select out the shape. Because it's a rock, I can even make it my own shape. I don't need to stick with what is there. And then I can feather it by, let's say, two pixels. And then when I delete, oh, two pixels. Ah. So now you see in the options, as I'm setting the lasso, it's at two pixels. I'm going to cut out a new shape. And when I delete it, it's gonna be softer at that edge, quite a bit softer. So look at the difference between this and that, right? And sometimes that can work pretty well with your background. Generally, I'll keep my lasso at a one pixel.